Let's take a look at how we can use some procedural methods to move objects along paths inside Houdini. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. I have actually done a video similar to this in the past, so you can watch that if you want. It's using VOPS, but I figured we would take a look at some different ways of doing this, as well as how to do it using VEX, and just build upon the last video where we took a look at how we can use the prim UV function, or how the prim UV function works, so that we can you know, see how we can use this in practice. So let's start off by dropping down a circle. With this circle, I'm just going to up the divisions here and I'm gonna make it an open arc here. And now we have just this nice smooth circle here. And the first way that we can actually have an object kind of move along the path would be to use a copy of points, but we need a, a point that moves along this path that we have created. So the way that we can do that, if we only need one point, it would be to use a carve node actually. So normally we use this to have this kind of grow along, but instead of doing that, if we come to this extract, we can come to extract points. And now you can see that if I just template this, we have this point moving along this circle. So if we want this to actually move along without any sort of keyframes, we can use $FF, but this only gives us the frame number, right? And as we continue on, it's gonna stick at this one. So what we need to do is multiply this by a fraction. So we'll do times and do 0 0.01. And now this should move along the path. But again, it stops right here. So a way to get around that is after it hits one, we need to take the decimal point only. So there's actually a vex function for this, which works here. So it's called frac. So it takes the basically the decimal point of whatever we have. So at frame 106, it's going to be with this times 0 0.01. It would be 1.06. So the frac function is just going to make sure that it only takes that 0 0.06. So now if I press play again, we can see our point moving along and then it's gonna loop continuously. It's not gonna stop once it hits that one value. So that's pretty handy. We're gonna use that again here with Vex. So let's just make a couple more circles here. So let's drop down an add node. Let's make a couple of different points. We'll do three and they'll do an attribute randomize. And we'll set this to be an N or a normal attribute. And then let's make this inside sphere. And then we can use a copy to points with those as our points and then the circle as our input. And now we've got a few different circles here. And we're going to use this as the basis for the paths for copying our objects onto these points and moving them, or sorry, moving them along these, these paths. So let's drop down a scatter node. And I'm going to drop this down to maybe like 40 or something. A lot smaller, just so that we have a bunch of points that are being scattered onto those paths. Doesn't actually really matter too much where they're getting copied to. But we can take an attribute wrangle now. And we're going to actually use this as our second input. And actually one more thing that we need after the scatter is to give us some sort of randomization for where our points are gonna be placed on that line. So I'm gonna drop down an attribute randomize again. Wire this up and we just need this to be a one dimensional value, so a float. And I'm gonna call this U pause because with the Carve node, we have this first U, just kind of makes sense to me. So we'll wire this into the first input of the attribute wrangle. And then we're going to need to give it a few things. So first of all, let's take a, well, let's create the kind of movement along this. So we'll just call this F, we'll make it a float value. And we'll just call this moved moved position. And we'll set that equal to, and then again, we're gonna use that fraction 
function. And then we're going to feed in our U pause or U position. And then we're going to add the frame number. Sorry, at frame. And we're going to multiply this by a value. So we'll just make this a channel float. So times CHF. And we'll call this um, step. And that's just going to allow us to control the speed at which this moves. So if I go ahead and do this, we have an error. I missed a parenthesis. Oops. And we can multiply this step to, or set this up to like 0 0.01. And if I go ahead and press play, we can see down here we have our values just kind of moving along. So let's add a couple of other things. We're going to need to get the total number of primitives from the, um, the second input here, so our circles. So we'll do an integer. We'll call this total prim. And we'll set that equal to, and we'll use the n primitives function. This just gets the number of primitives. We take a look here. It returns the number of primitives for the input geometry, which is going to be our second input. And then we're going to do another integer, call this one prim. And we're going to use a floor function and then fit a one and then a random function. And we'll use our point number for this. So that's going to give us a value from zero to one. We're going to remap that from zero to the total prim that we created here before. And the reason that we're doing this is so that we can randomize which primitive the point is going to um, end up on. So which, which of these circles the primitive is going to end up on. And then lastly, we just need to set our position. So at P is equal to, and then we're going to use that prim UV function again. So prim UV, and then we're going to work over the, the second geometry. So we want to make sure they're moving across the second geometry. And then again, we're going to affect the position. And then prim, which is going to be defining which prim we're going to be working on. And then we're going to feed in our moved position. So at moved position. And I'm going to go ahead and just template this so we can see what's going on here. And if I press play now, we can see we have our points moving along here. Let's just add in a sphere. We'll set it to a polygon. This will be fine. And then I copy two points. Wire in both of these. We can pack and instance these. That's fine. Let's make them quite a bit smaller. So something like that should work. And now if I press play, you can see that we have our objects just moving along our paths. And obviously you can set this to whatever you want. We could set up a attribute that controls, you know, which point um, or has multiple objects so that we can determine which point is going to carry which object, um, anything like that, and it works. We can also control the speed of these. If we wanted to randomize it, we would just multiply this by something. So we could randomize that on a per point basis if we wanted to. We can also come in here and change our circles or our paths if we wanted to. So let's just come in here and change the seed. And you can see that everything updates just perfectly with this. So it's not going to loop if you don't have it set up properly. So if we set this to 200 frames, this should loop. We shouldn't see any sort of breakage there. So um, because they're all moving at the same speed, it's going to just loop perfectly. If it doesn't uh, loop perfectly, be, it's probably because your frame range isn't set up correctly or you don't have the same speed applied to all of your objects. A slight little correction here. We do have the number of prims returning the number of primitives of, of our circle here, which in this case is three. So if we look at our copy to points, you see we have zero, one, and two. So we have three of these, but when we return 
the total prims here, it's going to take the values and remap them between zero and three. So if you run into a situation where you have this random function returning a value of one, you're going to have a point or multiple points that are just going to sit at the origin here. So let me just show you what that looks like. So they'll just sit here at the origin, which is not obviously what we want. In that case, you may need to subtract a value of one from your total prims, and that should give you the right alignment. The reason being, like I said, this is going to return a value of three, and since our primitives actually go from zero, one to two, the three value doesn't exist, and that's why that returns them back to the origin. So you may have to do that, but as you can see here, it kind of breaks this setup because we are flooring this out. And now we're just doing that so that we round to an integer instead of having it just casting wildly. So in this case, it actually works, so we don't need that. But if you do have any points that are just sitting at the origin, you can either blast them away, randomize your random, a little bit more so add like a seed value to that or you can subtract one from the total prims or find a different way to to round you could also um, use the ceiling function or something like that and that would work too uh, but the ceiling function you would need to you know do some extra work too because it would round anything below one up to a value of one so again just uh, however you want to play around with it but there are some caveats to each different way but this is a super simple way to just have your objects move across your paths wherever you want. And I figured it would be a good little exercise to put into practice this prim UV function because it is a, a very useful function that you don't have to necessarily use with the XYZ distance function, which a lot of people just associate it with. Probably take a look at that in the future, um, but for now, just wanted to take a look at some different ways we can use this prim uv function to generate some different effects so hopefully this has helped you out like i said this project file will be available in the description on patreon if you'd like to grab it you can do so on there anyways thank you guys for watching and have a good day